Hello everyone, in this video we'll be learning about another very useful STL container called pair. Pair is a very simple container. It consists of two elements or two objects, say A and B. These two elements can be of same or different data type. For example, they both can be say int or they both can be different. Say one can be int and another one can be character or any other custom data type. The first element of our pair is referenced by a variable called first and the second element of our pair is referenced by a variable called second. Now let's see how can we define a STL pair. We can write pair the data type of the first element that we want to store comma the data type of the second element in angular brackets and the identifier of our pair. For example, let's take int and character. So our pair is defined. Now let's initialize it. So we can initialize by writing p dot this identifier dot first is equals to the data of the first element which can be say 10 and p dot second is equals to the second element say a. So this will create a pair 10 comma a for us. Now let's understand the use of pair. Basically a pair couples two different data objects into a single object. If those two different data objects are associated or connected in some manner. For example, let's assume a rectangle which has a length and a breadth. So we can create a pair which can store the length and breadth into a single data object. Let's understand this through a different example. Let's assume a scenario wherein you need to create a vector where you need to store the data of different students and each student has a roll number and a name. So you can create a pair which has roll number and name. And each node of this vector can be the pair. Each node of this vector can be this pair. Now let's see what are the different ways of initializing a pair through our code. To use STL pair, we need to include the utility class. Now let's quickly define our pair. Here I define three pairs p1, p2 and p3 and I initialize the pair p1 with a and 100 and I got the output as a and 100. Now let's look at the second technique of defining our pair. Here I define my pair p2 by using the make pair function and I pass the first and the second element and I got my output for p2 as 10 and 20. So this is the second way of how can I define my pair. The first way is by initializing the first and the second element and the second technique is by using the make pair function. Now let's see the next technique. See here, I got the output for P3 as 20 and Arushi, which is the data I passed over here. So this is the third technique of how can I define and initialize my pair. Where I am defining my pair in the brackets, I can pass the data for first and the second element. I think this much knowledge of pairs is sufficient for competitive coding. I really hope that you like this video. We'll see you in the next video. Till then, keep coding.